Hi guys, this is Korak from Edureka. Welcome to today's session on GCP certification exam questions. Now before we get started with the topic at hand, let's just discuss the two agendas we have. The first thing we talk about is the different GCP certifications that are available to us. And then we talk about the different GCP exam questions that can come, right? So if you do like our videos, please do subscribe to the Edureka channel. And if you're looking for a Google Cloud Platform certification, please do check out the link in the comments below. So what are the different GCP certifications that are available? So Google provides us with three different kinds of certifications. The first one is the foundational certification, then is the associate certification, and finally we have the professional certification. So how are these three different from each other and who should pursue which certification? When it comes to the foundational certifications, we can see that a broad concept and knowledge of crowd services and products is necessary to basically get a foundational certification. Now, this is mostly necessary or, you know, feasible for people with non-technical backgrounds who do not have that much knowledge of cloud computing as such. Then we have the associate certification. Now, the associate certification is a certification which is focused mainly on the skills of deploying, monitoring, and maintaining Google Cloud Platform projects. So this is mainly something that is necessary when it comes to being a cloud engineer. And finally, we have the professional certification. Now the professional certification is something which helps you assess your advanced skills in design management and all of this, right? So these are the three certifications that Google provides us. Next, we have GCP exam questions. So let's go through certain exam questions that have been coming for Google Cloud Platform Associate Certification over the past few years. First up, we have your organization plans to migrate its financial transaction monitoring application to Google Cloud. Auditors need to view the data and run reports in BigQuery, but they are not allowed to perform transaction in the application. So you are leading the migration and you want the simplest solution. And what is it that you should do? So the answer to this is fairly simple. What you need to do is since you're working with BigQuery and there are a lot of auditors, what you need to do is create a group of auditors and assign roles to each BigQuery data viewer, right? So this is because a predefined role is always used to basically provide access to BigQuery for the group of auditors. Now, auditors can be added or deleted from the group, right? According to your responsibilities. So you can always have a group of auditors working on certain data sets at all times. Next up, we have you are managing your company's first Google Cloud project. Now project leads, developers and internal testers will participate in the project, which includes sensitive information. Now you need to ensure that only specific members of your development team have access to certain sensitive information that you have and you want to assign the appropriate identity and IAM roles. So how should you do that? So when it comes to, let's say, data integrity and sensitive information, you have to make sure that your authentication for every role and authentication for every project is specific and you have to make sure that you don't want, if you don't want everybody in the team to know, then you will have to assign roles for specific users who can access these projects. So you have to create the groups and then assign the pre-IAM predefined roles for each group, right? So this is included for those who will have access to the data that you have, right? So predefined roles are fine grained enough to set permissions for specific roles. And that is how you basically make sure that your sensitive data is only accessed by people you want them to see. The next question is you are responsible for monitoring all the changes in your cloud storage and Firestone instances. For each change, you need to invoke an action that will verify the compliance of the change in near real time. So you want to accomplish this with minimal setup. So when it comes to compliance and real time application of Firestone and storage, you have to make sure that you have to use Google Cloud function events and call the security scripts for the function event triggers. This is because Google Cloud Function provides a fast response and requires minimal amount of setup. The next question is, your application needs to process a significant rate of transactions. The rate of transactions exceeds the processing capabilities of a single virtual machine. 
you want to spread transactions across multiple servers in real time and in the most cost effective manner so how do you do that so the answer to this will be that you have to send transactions to pubsub now pubsub is another search api that is present in google cloud platform and you can use this to process the transactions in the vm in a managed instance group right so pubsub is a very scalable solution that can be effectively distributed in a large number of tasks in a group at a very low cost so this is why pubsub is the best option when it comes to assigning large number of tasks effectively in a group next up we have your team needs to directly connect your on premises resources to several virtual machines inside a virtual private cloud you want to provide your team with fast and secure access to the vms with minimal maintenance and cost how do you do that so here we see that we can use cloud vpn to create a bridge between the virtual private clouds and your specific network so this is the most feasible option as it adheres to google's recommended cloud practices and if you follow google's best practices you will basically make sure that you can have the minimal cost and the maximum amount of maintenance with no cost next up we have you are implementing cloud storage for your organization and you need to follow your organization's regulations now these include that you have to archive data older than one year you have to delete data older than five years and you have to use standard storage for all other data now you want to implement these guidelines automatically and in the simplest manner available so to do this what you have to do is you'll have to set up a project life cycle management so these are policies that allows you to basically automate the entire implementation process of the organization's data policy and next up we come to question number 7 now here we can see that you are creating a cloud iot application requiring data storage for up to 10 petabytes right the application must support high speed reads and writes of small pieces of data but your data schema is simple you want to use the most economical solution for data storage now in this case when you have to use data storage for your cloud iot application that you need for continuous read writes you will have to make sure that you want economical data storage capabilities so here what you do is you store it in the cloud big table and implement the business logic in the programming language of your choice now what big table does is big table provides high speed reads and writes and accommodates a simple schema which basically makes it very cost effective the next question is you have created a kubernetes deployment on google kubernetes engine that has a back end service now google kubernetes engine is an ml service provided by google and you also have pods that run on the front end service now you basically do not want any interruption in the communication between the front end and the back end even if these pods are removed or restarted now what should you do when there is a case like this now it's a very simple answer you have to create a service that groups your pods together in the back end service and tells your front end pods to communicate to that service so you basically have a middle intermediate service that connects both to your back end and front end Next we have question number 9 you are responsible for the user management service of your global company the services will add update delete and list addresses each of these operations is implemented by a docker container microservice the processing load can vary from low to very high you want to deploy the service on good cloud for scalability and minimal administration what should you do now here what you have to do is you have to deploy your docker containers into cloud run Now cloud run is a managed service that basically helps you with minimal administration of your docker containers. And finally we come to the last question. Question 10. You provide a service that you need to open to everyone in your partner network. You have a server and an IP address where the application is located. But you do not want to change the IP address of your DNS server if your server crashes or it's replaced. You also want to avoid downtime and deliver a solution for minimal costs in setup. What should you do now? So when it comes to making sure that you do not have to change your IP address on your DNS server when your server crashes or is replaced, what you do is you reserve a static external IP address and assign it using Cloud DNS. 
external ips are routable and can be advertised and seen on the internet easily and it is the most cost effective solution as well so with that i end today's session thank you and have a nice day i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to edureka channel to learn more happy learning